Hi guys, how you doing? Um, I thought I'd do another video uh, based on a couple of questions actually. So it's always good to get questions, this is the thing. Because if you get questions then it gives you something to talk about. <laughs> instead, of, instead of always just trying to decide of what, what to talk about. So, um, a couple of questions on emails were from new guys asking if they can if they should just keep doing the other gym classes outside of the the the, the, the sessions at the shed or rather going uh, so for example a couple of people one person gave an example um of they enjoy spin classes so they go maybe three times a week to a spin they were planning on going to a spin class three times a week um and someone else had just mentioned that they just like going to various gym classes throughout the week really um so I think I think it's important to try and first of all ask yourself why why you're going to the classes um so if it's for uh if it's from a psychological point of view so obviously i've been in this sort of game a long time now and one of the things i've learned over the last sort of 12 years or so is um the huge psychological and mental benefits of exercise and um, so for some people um, training every day or exercising every day um, is a really good mental sort of release so it sets them up for the day site in a sort of mentally um so if that's your reason if that's your main reason because everyone has to ultimately to, if you're going to continue to exercise throughout your life and you have to have a reason to do that um and so if that's your main reason to do it then by all means go for it and i, I would never want to discourage anyone from exercising for, for that reason alone um if on the other hand you're going just out of habit because you think that it will help you, I don't know, lose weight, for example, then it may it may not necessarily be be beneficial. Um, so it does it ultimately depends on the nature of the class. But what we do know, what we definitely do know from from millions of studies and all this sort of thing, is that the most the the, the your body can only really tolerate three to four. Uh, intense exercise sessions per week, um, and what I what I mean um, when I say tolerate from a from a weight loss or fat loss point of view, I mean um, it can only really tolerate that much, and anything um, over and above that number, there is a very clear path of dim of of diminishing returns. Basically, like a law of diminishing returns instead of the benefit in, in terms of the benefits of it. So, for example, if you were to do three intense sessions a week there would be a very obvious, definite benefit from a sort of, a, that, that, contri that could contribute to sort of fat loss or whatever. Um, but as soon as you go above sort of three or four, and it goes up towards five or six or seven, um, the benefit of those fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh sessions are nowhere near as beneficial as the first three. So that's so it's almost like a, it's a glass ceiling uh, effect. Um, to the point where it's almost pointless from that point of view. Um, it's, as in it's a waste of time <laughs> um, uh, so and that's so that's that's to do with something called adaptive thermogenesis um, so your body essentially if you almost imagine your body like a thermostat and it adjusts accordingly throughout the day based on the demands you set upon it so um, if you do loads and loads of intense exercise throughout the week which will burn up energy then your body doesn't really like that because it wants to remain the same. It wants to maintain its homeostasis. So what it will do is it will basically downregulate at other times of the day on a conscious and subconscious level. Uh, so on a conscious level, you might feel more tired after doing that amount of intense exercise. So you might sit about more or you might rest more. Um, or, uh, yeah, you might just think, oh, God, I'm knackered after that. I need to sit down. Um, another example of... Uh, responding to that, that, that to the to the stimulus of too much exercise is that you get hungrier, so you just eat, you so you you crave and eat more food, um, to the point where you almost certainly, um, not definitely, but almost certainly, certainly long term you cancel it out, so um, you quickly cancel out the the extra energy you might have burned at the session um, by by your body will respond by wanting to eat more and you will eat more, um, and in a subconscious a subconscious example would be fidgeting, so when you're sitting about. You might sort of do this with your hands. You might be chatting to someone and move your hands about, uh, that kind of thing. So you fidget. Your body will move and fidget, um, and the you become like less fidgety basically because every time you move, you, it requires a level of energy, even on a subconscious level. Blinking, breathing, digesting food, everything you do will require some sort of energy. So, so that's a subconscious example of of down regulating of energy. So. From, so in, in other words, if, if the reason you're going to the gym more than three to four times a week is because you think it's going to aid your fat loss or weight loss goals, 
um, then going to gym classes, because usually by their nature they're intense, um, is definitely 100% not going to benefit you. And um, that's just the way it is. That will be very difficult for you to get, maybe get your head around if you're someone that does that a lot. It might even seem counterintuitive, um, but that's just the way it is um, and that's that's you've got to try and take into account the psychological effect as well that you're wanting to maybe ignore and what I mean by that is for example if I have eaten a ton of pizza or ice cream on any given day right we can't help as, as, as people I don't think we can help but sometimes feel oh I feel quite heavy after that and then we'll go out a run and psychologically we might then Say, oh, I feel a bit lighter after that, um, or you'll be, or you'll almost convince yourself that after eating a big meal of junk, you'll pinch your f- stomach and feel as though there's extra belly fat there, and you'll be like, oh god, and you'll sort of, sort of damn yourself, and then you'll go out and run, and then you'll sort of do it again, and you'll be like, oh, and you'll feel light, and you'll probably feel slightly better about it, and you'll almost convince yourself that you've gained a little bit of fat around your stomach after eating and then you'll pinch your stomach to feel it to clarify what you think and then equally you'll do the opposite after a run or and in both cases like that's just your mind playing tricks on you because you do not the body doesn't work like that you don't just suddenly consume and store and create a fat within a few hours of of either eating or consuming or, or either eating food or then uh, burning it off through a run it's purely psychological that 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 feeling that you think that there's an actual physical change happening there <laughs> um so yeah, so basically it depends on your reason for doing it. Okay, if you're going to do more exercise uh, out with the sessions um, and you're already doing, I would say four and ten sessions a week is enough. So if you're doing the programme, then you're already doing three because you're doing the two indoor sessions and you're doing the running session. So you can afford to definitely do one more intense session if you wanted. If you are doing a gym session though, uh, just make sure that you're not, you're not then redoing or recreating bad habits or laid down bad habits that you're trying to fix at the classes um, um, so these are the sort of things you need to consider um, okay low intensity exercise so out with if you try and see the bigger picture after the four three to four intense exercise sessions if fat loss or weight loss is your is your focus then you recognize that the bigger picture is that it's going to it's going to your success is going to be determined by what you do outside of that structured exercise i.e not going to the gym i.e how much do you walk about? How active you are? How many steps you take? If you've got if you've got a job that means you sit at a desk all day, then how are you going to combat that by walking more? Walking more in some ways, in fact, in several ways, is more beneficial than going to the gym and pounding the gym an extra three times a week, because walking by nature is low intensity, i.e., it's low stress, whereas high intensity exercise by definition is intense. Therefore, it's more stressful physiologically, um, so it's going to have a an effect, a potentially negative effect on your body if you do too much of it. Professional athletes always find it ironic that your average person trying to get fit tends to train more intensely and harder than top athletes at the top of their game. Okay, and that is that's that's a strange concept. So I think there's a sort of misconception again that all the top athletes train intensely all the time, um, but they don't. They, they, they'll, they'll do three potentially four and ten sessions a week absolutely max and that will be that's also considering their age so the, the sort of athletes between the ages of 18 to 28 29 30 they'll probably get away with four and ten sessions a week after 30 to 35 40 the, the sort of more senior athletes that are still at the top of their game they really need to taper it and they'll probably do three max sessions the rest of the time they'll be doing restorative work yoga mobility work recovery work recovery runs um, and that's that's just the way it is so uh, emma for example at the moment is, is training she's wanting to she's wanting to race in the summer um, she trains uh, five to six times a week but three of those sessions only three of those sessions are intense the other stuff's like she'll do a wee 15 minute restorative circuit in the house something like that so there's this common misconception again that all your training needs to be really intense um and it can't be that way. You can't get the more, the more, the more, the more frequently you train intensely, the less effective it's going to be. Okay, because you need to allow for recovery. That's the whole point. In, in in intense training, you create a stimulus on the body that's going to break it down, so that it can then recover and grow back stronger. Um, and if you don't ever allow for recovery, then it's never going to get the chance to grow back, go go grow back stronger. So even from a performance standpoint. Um, even from a performance standpoint, you need to 
consider the number of intense sessions you're doing otherwise your performance will stall so so in other words less is more a lot of the time when it comes to intense exercise not when it comes to general activity like walking and stuff like that um, and then because it's low intensity okay uh, and then the other side of the coin from a weight loss and fat loss perspective after you've taken into account three or four intense sessions a week max, after you've taken into account increasing your activity levels, is your diet, it's as simple as that, it's the diet that's going to dictate what happens. So these are where your focus points should be. So if you already go to the gym three or four times a week, instead of going another fifth or sixth or seventh time of the week, um, or doing a 30 minute hit session in your house, like which you don't need to do, maybe consider prepping food or reading up a wee bit more nutrition, or try to figure out a way of getting a better balance between your diet and your 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 lifestyle. So that's that's really what focusing on the long game is all about, okay. And um, but in terms of extra, extra extra sessions, yoga, Pilates, they would they would come under sort of restorative recovery work, spin classes and the like. They're intense, right? So, but as I said, it depends on why you're doing it. If you're doing it because you love it. Um, and you're doing it because mentally it makes you feel really good, which I can totally understand because that's one of the main reasons I train, then by all means keep doing it. But recognise that it won't benefit you from a fat loss or weight loss perspective and it potentially will hold you back from a strength development perspective as well um, because it will interfere with your recovery, especially once the weight's kicking. So yeah, that was just my thoughts for the afternoon. Um, any questions on that? Please just give us a shout. Hope it makes sense. Thanks.